Okay, Dorado? This map was hard to watch, I think. If you're a Runaway fan, probably one of the biggest slaughterings I've seen in quite some time. I think it was Envy versus Cole, like last year or something, that this happened, where they just got spawn camped for the entire duration of their defense. But this was quite the. This is where you could feel the remnants of the Hanamura demoralization coming in. Um, and I do like the commitment from Lunatic High to stick to what's working for them. Um, most of the maps that Lunatic High has lost so far, or at least the assault, the payload maps, have come on the back of Lunatic High playing heroes that I think they're not super comfortable on. And by that, I just mean Miro not playing Winston or Zumba not playing Zarya or D.Va. But, um... Things fall apart very quickly in this match. No, Eska pops off on this map, actually. I think he needed to play Mei one game, just like, get back into, like, he has like a spiritual connection to Mei, so when he, hit, when he picked Mei, it like, gave him this power to become an Overwatch god. And then he started channeling it. And then this map happened. So they actually go with a Reinhardtless offense, which is interesting and risky as anything, but they execute so well. Um, who are you goes over the back wall, Eska comes in from the top left, and then Miro jumps in from upstairs. So like you see, they have one player up top there, they have Diva on the cart, they have the Tracer coming in from the left side, and then they have the who are you Genji over the wall. So now they all just converge on this Ana at the same time. And it's pretty sick. So Haxel somehow kills himself to a Winston bubble and they just go in. Now it's just two free kills and Eska comes in on this Roadhog and they just clean up. Um, but yeah, Eska goes off here. Nice 3k for Eska. Well executed though, I mean, they just surrounded them. See, Eska starts channeling his inner Mei, like he becomes one with Overwatch in that moment. But then this happens. This was actually really unfortunate because I was hyping him up in my head. I was like, yo, Esco's playing really well. And then this Pulse Bomb is pretty funny. I mean, it's unfortunate. They win the fight because they're at such an advantage right now with their heroes. Stitch switches to the McCree. Bumper switches to the Diva. Now Runaway is playing Class Roulette. But who are you gets in behind? Spam, spam, spam. Winston jumps up top. Esco misses the jump and then Pulse Bombs the wall and the camera catches it right at the end. Unfortunate. But Discord's actually such a good ability against this team. Kaiser gets kited super hard here. Good boot by Toby. Gets Kaiser super out of position. He just goes down, I think, here. But who are you and who are you and Toby make a crazy play right there? For Toby to keep Kaiser occupied for that long, I mean who are you to kill Cox at the same time is pretty map winning. But they get this point almost for free, actually. The Discord's destroying them so hard. And they're just bullying Kaiser with Discord and dive. And again, this is why it's kind of weird for me that they picked this map. I guess they didn't have any choice. I'm assuming they didn't. Oh yeah, they didn't have a choice. But this map... Definitely Lunatic High favorite in my opinion because you can get away with it. But I think if you're Lunatic High, you need to switch your comp right now because running Winston with no Reinhardt or running Reinhardtless comps on this point in particular are pretty rough. Um, and Lunatic High is in like a crazy spot right now to set a record time, but they stay on this composition forever. That was unfortunate. So like I can I can get behind that pulse bomb missing because I would have thought that was gonna hit. But, unfortunate. Him dying there is big. They just lose this fight. But now they're trying... They're, like, making a mountain out of a molehill right now. I don't... Like, that's a pretty NA ult for Miro right there, too. I don't know what his plan was there. He's just feeding everyone ult charge right now. Haxel has ult. Kaiser has ult. Miro does get out, but... Um... 
because he had the primal rage on for a good chunk of that, so it wasn't taking too much. Yeah, there's been a few times where I think if Eska had hit a pulse bomb, they would have won the map instantly, which is sad. But that's the problem. That's like the that's just tracer. Like that's how tracer works. You either get the killer, or you don't. But I like that Eska is just bullying Stitch here. Like his confidence is definitely way higher here to just take this one v one, even with the health pack disadvantage. But they don't have any Reinhardt, and eventually Kaiser's just gonna shatter them, and they're gonna get destroyed. Forces out the Dragon Blade. Haxel doesn't die there. Good sound barrier to keep him alive. I didn't even need it, but. I guess it's fine because Kaiser still has Shatter. And there's no good team wiping abilities on Lunatikai. No Graviton, no Nano Blade, no Shatter. Like, I really hate Lunatikai's composition for this particular point of the map, especially since you have to come in through like two very small doors. But there's a lot of bashing your head into the wall here for Lunatikai. Because realistically, unless Miro blocks another Earth Shatter, Kaiser should be able to get at least one or two players. Asuka's just catching these fire strikes, man. Well played. Them sleep darts. But that's a really big fight for them to win too, because they didn't have to expend anything. They just got that fight for free. Another one. So Jaehong switches to Ana, gets this nano boost quite fast, but now it's nano blade versus earth shatter, and almost another nano blade. But this nano blade has to work, and then a crazy sleep dart from Cops. It's a big deal though for that to happen because it kind of nullifies the fact that he had picked Anna because they were going for the nano boost, but he got the dragon blade refunded because it didn't actually go off. So it's almost like Jaehong never actually switched heroes and now they switched their entire comp to Eska Diva. They're running triple tank Genji now, but they don't have a nano boost. So I honestly think that Lunatic High should have done something like this maybe three minutes ago. Just as soon as they capped this, I would have preferred if Miro just got off Winston and they just went Reinhardt Roadhog or something of that nature. But even the Tracer might not be bad. It's just eventually this is going to happen. Like now they put themselves as a huge alt disadvantage. But Runaway is doing a really good job. Kaiser still hasn't even earth shattered because he hasn't needed to. And that's pretty insane to be honest. But that has a lot to do with Lunatikai's composition just not being good at coming through the door. Like Lunatikai has to control the cart and take a fight. If they could just get a single hook on somebody, it would be so good. But honestly, if Eska got good at Roadhog, this team would be almost unbeatable. Bitch going for a sneaky pulse. Found out, doesn't go for it. Miro kills Runner here, don't know how, and then they snowball off that. But you see, like, that's all they needed. They just needed a Reinhardt to get through that door. And the second that they have the Reinhardt, the fight gets so much easier for them. I think teams need to start doing that, though, in general, on both NA and Korea server. Like, just swap immediately, don't even try to win a fight that way. It's just, it's just hard, like, it's inconsistent. That's unfortunate that that didn't hit anybody. That's unfortunate. Zumba's like full charge though right now. <laughs> Miro gets a shatter off and just gets thrown over the wall. They played that really well, though, Lunatikai. The thing is, though, if they had just switched their composition three minutes earlier, they have three minutes left on the clock. So this is where it gets a little dicey if you're a Lunatikai fan. You're like, okay, they finished the map, but they barely finished the map. Is it going to be good enough? Because their defense on Route 66 was pretty bad. But whatever. I mean, they finished the map. And there's a lot. it's actually really hard to finish that map in particular. But... I also wonder what the time might have been if that nano blade didn't get earth or 
sleep darted by Cox. Guys are kind of getting bopped around there. They got to complete the map for sure, but if they do, we're going to be in a really similar situation between these two teams. Yeah. And if they can, can they do it with time left in the time bank? Give themselves a big advantage. I mean, only five seconds for Lunatic High, but yes, exactly. in, in these escort maps, every second is so important because that's one fewer second you don't have to push during overtime when you can just get blasted off of the cart. Right. And this is where the. You finish with two minutes and you just have a crazy. This is where the crimes were committed. We'll see if runaway Close your eyes, runaway fans. Gonna get graphic in here real quick. It looks like so far they've got that combo of Genji Tracer that they love so much. Bumper, always a question what he's gonna play, but the road dog makes some choice here on the pass. I think this is this is looking much more. And there's like a covert ops sniper. They want to actually contest with choke point. Lunatic Eye did a great job of sowing chaos in the back line and opening up on point A and rolling that snowball all the way through point B. All right. This is it. Runaway. Trying to make a push. Maybe win the tournament. Maybe send it to the time bank mode. See if they can do it from there. Lunatic High. I'll hold here before three points. So the defense that they run here is super good. And, we're underway. Run and it's a little different from what Rogue does, because I don't think Rogue does it with the D.Va. But Jaehyung literally just hit up there. And then drops the nade and hits like four or five people and they just dive. And that's how this fight starts. And this is where you start getting tilted. Because now you're just in your spawn getting camped. And it, that nade just started the entire thing. If that nade didn't hit, who knows how this goes. But they're just going to abuse this high ground the entire time. And now Eska, again, he doesn't have to kill Stitch. He just has to deal with Stitch. And people were saying that Eska was getting outplayed by Stitch a lot. But I don't think, like, Eska's job isn't to kill Stitch here. It's just make sure Stitch isn't killing Jaehong. As long as Jaehong is alive, you don't care what Stitch is doing. Um, but you see, like, they're just go like they can just keep going back to the roof, going back to the roof, going back to the roof. Like, what are you really gonna do against Lunatic High right now? Runaway has a Roadhog. Like, Bumper needs to hit a crazy hook, or that's it. There's no other way for them to kill. Or Haxel has to somehow kill them or kill Jaehong, but Jaehong is well protected by Toby. So this composition and the way that they're playing it is super abusive of the map. Um, and Runaway needs to switch up to like a Diva, to a Winston, to a Farah. Just something that can get up on this roof, because every hero that they run that can't get on the roof is just a liability. And Miro's doing a really good job here of sawing out the point. They pop sound barrier to save him, but... Uh, that was a, probably an overcommittal. I don't know if they needed to pop Primal and Dragon Blade. I guess they made space for each other, so it works out. It might just be... A, I mean, you could, like, kind of call it a combo, but they did waste a lot of ults there. It's a guy. That said, though, Kaiser just gave up Reinhardt with Earth Shatter because that's how hard they're getting pounded, and he knows that it's going to be hard for him to hit a big Earth Shatter. Though, in reality, I wonder if, like, even if he gets one or two people, it's probably worth it. So, him switching there, I don't really agree with, but. Good pulse bomb. So, like, now that they killed. Mm, I don't know. They killed both supports. If they had a Shatter here, it could have been crazy. But they don't have a shatter anymore. So I wonder how much they regretted that swap actually. The Haxel's cleaning up now. But even that was a huge stall from Esco. Like that was really well played. He didn't die. His whole team's up. He's the last one to spawn, but Kart's not in a capable position and Jaehong has nano boost. So as long as they get like nano on probably Miro, I would say it'll be fine. If Miro can get like one kill, maybe two. But Eska just dealing with Stitch again. You know, Blade comes out. Jaehong gets the ult off, though. Actually gets a 2k, both supports down, but there's a nano boosted Genji? I guess he just popped down whoever he could hit. Haxel, or Who Are You does a shitload of work with this Dragon Blade, though, given the fact that both of his supports died. And Eska gets a 2k onto the mech suit and the Winston, which is really big. Jaehong comes in, clutch saves him at the last second. Kills runner. See, like, Esco starts playing really well on this map. At least on this point in particular, too. If his pulse bombs were better, he'd be so much, like, he'd be so much more consistent and have such a bigger impact, but whatever. 
Trade Pulse Bomb for self destruct. Mio kills Bumper. Doesn't get the mech suit back, which is a big deal. Look at Eska, dude. He's cheating. But yeah. Runaway didn't really have. Imagine if Runaway had that shatter. And maybe that's why Kaiser was super hard on himself after this series, because. If they had a shatter there at any point, it might have been game winning. Or at least point winning, maybe not game winning. But them not running the Reinhardt when the Reinhardt compositions have been their bread and butter the whole time that like the entire tournament is a little surprising to me. I understand why they swapped, but I do think in retrospect that was probably a mistake, so that's just how it goes though.